but you've been through it already for for the past 14 years no so, 14. well your daughter is 14 right no my daughter's nine oh, nine and a half she'll be 10 this year oh 10 right yeah okay okay i got my we're not all great at math you know i know i was gonna say that's your italian side brother <laughs> What up, y'all? Another episode of Mobile Homies. We are stuck at the house. I have a great friend right here, man. He's chilling. You see him. You know him. You know who he is. Comedian, actor, writer, hip-hop aficionado, producer, DJ, the fucking man, my friend, Russell Peters. Hey, Lyrics Born. How you doing, man? Dylan, is that a Cross Colors jacket behind you? Yes. No. Oh, let me tell you about this jacket, man. You're going to appreciate this shit. That is one of Arsenio's jackets. Hilarious. He's actually a really, really, really nice guy. He seems like it, man. He's a really great guy. One night, uh, about a year and a half ago, Tiffany Haddish took me to Eddie Murphy's house. Mm -hmm. She fell asleep on Eddie's couch, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get home. <laughs> and um, Arsenio was there. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and he was leaving. I was like, yo, Ars, which way are you going? He goes, I'm going to the valley. I go, oh, can I get a ride with you? <laughs> Tiffany's falling asleep. He's like. Yeah, no problem. So Arsenio drove me home. You know, I, I don't think he gives an I don't think he gets enough credit for everything. What are you doing? I almost sneezed. I had to cover my face when I was about to sneeze. I'm like, he's yawning. Are we is he bored already? What we no, doing? my nose started tickling and I sneeze ugly, so I covered my face. <laughs> I said, I'm one of these sneezers. So I <laughs> You did the Drake <laughs> meme, bro. You know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but how about this painting behind me? Is that Q? Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Well, on a side note, I just want to show you, this is q -Bert's actual QFO. That was the one he used to take on tour with him. He tagged it up and everything. Yeah, that's really dope. Shout out to q -Bert, man, my guy. I love that dude. I'm known him for well, He's amazing, that guy. Richard. So, your fucking Thanksgiving party. Those pictures are legendary, bro. Those Pretty pictures. cool, huh? I'm like, this dude is flanked by like, Every old school rapper that's like 60 plus, you know what I mean? From like the early 80s. You know, I always define it as because it, it, it gave me an identity. And I always tell those guys, like, why are you always so cool with us? I go, without you, there's no me. Right. The younger generation now doesn't get that. Mm. They're like, nah, nah, this is, and I'm like, just stop. Understand the tree doesn't grow without the roots. Speaking of which, I thought Hip Hop Evolution did an amazing, which you were the producer of, I thought Hip Hop Evolution did an amazing job of documenting that, those, those, that time period, you know, but what is it about that era that you feel the need to surround yourself with the, that energy and these guys, you know what I mean? Because like, those guys are pioneers. Mm -hmm. Those guys created something out of nothing. And I'm not like, I don't, I, I don't want to sound egotistical or arrogant or I'm, I'm, I'm not likening myself to them in that in that regard, but I'm the first Indian comic. Yes. I started in 1989, before any of these fucking kids were even born, probably. So for me, I have a kinship with people who feel like they started something and never really got their just desserts for it. Mm. Now, I was fortunate enough to make a fantastic career out of it, but I got lucky. You know, uh, these guys didn't get the same break. And and they gave the world something. They gave them something so much more than I've given the world. And I just feel like it's so unfair. So I, I always want to be around them to let them know that what they did means something and give them the opportunity to meet some of the people I get to meet. You know, whether they're money people or whatever, just some, hopefully somebody can change their life around. Even with all the, the milestones that you've achieved, and even with all the success that you've had, you're underrated or under-celebrated or, or underappreciated. Do you feel that way about yourself? I, I, I don't know if I feel like that, but I know that I don't want anything from anybody, but I want you to understand what I did when I did it was not something that was being done. So, like, I hear, like, these young kids now, oh, he's, man, he's hacky, he does this. And I go, no, no, it's not hacky when I do it. I'm the guy that created it. It's hacky if you do it. It's not like, it's like saying Bill Maher's hacky for talking about politics. No, that's what he does. 
a, a lot of these guys nowadays, like a lot of the kids doing comedy, don't don't do the hard road. I did the hard road, right? Like I did gigs, and not like a gig. I did runs of gigs in fucking rooms where they don't want to see comedy. Right. Where it's a bar in the middle of nowhere, and you're there for your fifty dollars. You know, there's there's different routes in the game now. Yeah. But I had the hard route. Yeah. And I'm not mad that I took the hard route. I'm actually very grateful that I took the hard route. But yeah. I feel bad for these kids that think it's just so easy to go and do it. I'm like, it's not like that. But I mean, isn't that the point, though? Isn't that the point that for them not to understand the struggle that that? No, the it's it, the point. The point is for them to understand that that the struggle was taken away from them because I did certain things. Like if I if I made any mistakes, which I made a lot. Mm -hmm. Th they were there. I did those mistakes, made those mistakes so that they won't make the mistakes, which in turn will shorten their journey to where they want to get to. Right. But white parents explain things to their kids, you know? They do. You, you take the time to do that. That's nice. Indian parents, they're the worst. If they don't want you to do something, they will make up the most insane story <laughs> as to why you shouldn't do something and scare you into not ever thinking about doing it. Russell! Don't go on the road, you'll get hit by the car and you'll break apart. <laughs> Not I might get hit by a car, no, I will get hit by the car. Apparently there's only one car in my neighborhood and I was going to get hit by it and I was gonna break apart. How the fuck do you break apart? When I was a kid, I thought I was made out of Lego because I was gonna break apart one day. And you just had a baby within the past year? Or yeah, I had my son's. My son is 14 months almost now. Congratulations, man. Like, I talk about this with my wife. I just like, I know that if I had a kid right now, it's just certain shit. I, I'm going to have to sit out. It's not even the running after him that gets me. It's the bending down. <laughs> like, I got to walk with him, but I got to bend down to get to him. And like, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck my back. And I, you know, I, I trained jujitsu. You know, I could lay on my back and train. I could fight all day, but yeah. bending over like that and walking, I'm like, listen, this is killing me, Larry. Larry. <laughs> You're killing me, Larry. You're killing me, Larry. What belt are you now? Uh, blue with three stripes. I'll be purple soon. So what is that? How far are you from, from black belt is that? Uh, purple, brown, black. Oh, you're getting close, man. Getting close. How long have you been doing it for? Four years. Have you ever had to use it in the streets? I have. What happened? I didn't have to. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I did. <clears throat> I, I was in my friend's jewelry store in the Diamond District in, in Manhattan. What were, and, you, uh, were you buying something? Yeah, I was getting uh, my girlfriend a Valentine's Day gift. Oh, OK. And uh, this dude came in, and he tried to steal a ring a $300,000 ring. But when he made the dash for the door, I was standing right near the door. He made a dash for the door, and as soon as he got up to make the dash, they hit a button and all the doors lock. Ah, oh, wow. And he runs to the door, and I'm standing like right beside it. It's locked, and he turns around, and he's facing me, and I'm like. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then my friend's father runs over and goes, hey. And that guy took a swing at my friend's father. That's when I jumped in. What? So I went to go get him with a rear naked choke, but one of the other guys from the store pulled him down, so I missed his neck. Then they're all struggling with him and fighting, and I'm like, Jesus, none of you guys know how to fight. Would you just let me handle this? So I got him in an arm bar and, and a wrist lock, and I held him until the cops came. As soon as I locked his arm, the guy goes, OK. <laughs> he said, OK. OK. <laughs> Like, hey, so he tapped did. out. That was him tapping he out. Tapped right? out. He tapped out. <laughs> and I held. I had it locked, and I was pulling it. I was trying to snap it a little, but what did your friend and his father say? Did oh, they, they were very grateful. You know, they gave me a discount. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was expecting a discount regardless. <laughs> right. Totally. Can't wait to hang, man. The next time we're in each other's cities, man. You let me know anytime, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't put me in a fucking arm bar, man. I'll show you some real <laughs> slick, simple shit. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Have a great day, man. I appreciate it, man. Bye, Asian born. Later. <laughs>